Hi, my name is Yanan Andamajit. My name is Rasad Muhammad Zaki. We are our NB squad from Indonesia. We study at SMP Negeri 6 Surabaya, Indonesia. It's one of the best junior high school in Surabaya, Indonesia. It was had participated in some national robotics competition in Indonesia. Mostly as a team, we won some of those competitions. Therefore, we had collaborated as one team since the fifth grade of elementary school. We came from the same elementary school. This is our third experiences joining RCAP competitions. Last year, on May 2021, we won the second place for RCAP Tianjin China for co-space autonomous first step U12 category. Then, on November 2021, we won the first place for RCAP IG Japan co-space autonomous driving challenge U19 super team. In the end of 2021, we are already 13 years old, so we started to join the U19 category. And it was delightful that our video presentation had awarded the first place for RCAP Influencer Award Community Awareness for the same category. So here's the summary of our preliminary challenge on April 30, 2022. As the RCAP committee sent us the link of the map, we started to download it. We analyzed the mission of the task, investigated the problems, then what is the best method we use to determine the right steps to accomplish the challenge. Here's the map from the preliminary challenge last week. As we can see here, there are six waypoints we should take before reaching the finish point. Our mission is to program the robot to travel the map through all the waypoints and reach the finish point as fast as possible. Before we program the robot, first of all we need to analyzing the best route we will choose. As we seen in this picture, we need to determine which path is the shortest way for each waypoint to another one and which path has the least number of turns. Here is the best route we try to arrange for the robot. After reaching the first waypoint, the robot turns right and takes two shortcuts in order to save the time. Then, the robot turns left to get the second waypoint. After that, it goes backward, then turning back to the next waypoint. The robot will detect the green marker, therefore, the robot will go straight ahead. Before reaching the third waypoint, the robot will find a T-junction, then turn left. After that, the robot turns around to get the faster path to the fourth waypoint. After reaching the fourth waypoint, it will turn right to get the shorter way. Then the robot will find a green marker before turning left to reach the fifth waypoint. After that, it will find purple marker as we program the robot to detect every color marker. It will turn right as programmed and find the blue one for turning left. The purpose of those markers for the robot to have the faster path. After finding the sixth waypoint, the robot will turn right to reach the finish point. After decided which route we take, then we try to determine the strategy we used to accomplish the challenge. The main questions for this space are how to how to save the time, how to run the robot consistently without falling out of the track. The strategy we use for the preliminary challenge are using shortcuts and implementing PID in our program. We took five shortcuts for this map to save the time. The two first shortcuts before the second waypoint without color marker. The others use color marker. In this picture, we can see some algorithms we used in our program. It could be explained if the RGB color sensor detects orange color, then the robot will stop for two seconds and increase the checkpoint variable. If the RGB color sensor detects green color, then the robot will take a sharp turn to the right. Else if the RGB color sensor detects blue color, then the robot will take a 90 degrees turn to the left. Otherwise, if the RGB color sensor detects purple color, then the robot will make a 90 degrees turn to the right. The PID, aka Proportional Integral Derivative, is used to control the robot to follow the line with high accuracy. As seen in the table here, the sensor will detect error based on how it senses the white line. If the error value is less or more than zero, then automatically it will be corrected to the optimal position, which is zero. 
Thus, this method will allow the robot to follow the line precisely. How to use the RGB color sensor for shortcuts Most of the shortcuts use color marker on the map as a sign to activate the program. We are using RGB color sensor for detecting the color marker. For example, the color marker for this shortcut is green. First, we determine the value of each color as the robot passes the color marker. Then put the value of the color marker into the RGB sensor in the robot UI. Then put the C program to the advanced action and setting up the duration of the program. So here we are in our preliminary game. This is the first and the second shortcut. This is the third shortcut. And this is the fourth shortcut. And this is the fifth shortcut. At the end, we finish the game in 37 seconds. Technology has a purpose for making humans' lives easier and helping to solve mankind's problems. In some ways, AI technology is already there in our daily lives, such as face or voice recognition in some mobile phone, in mobile banking technology, games, or even in our social media application, etc. By learning co-space autonomous driving, we find out that this technology could be applied for a driver's car. I imagine one day we can order a taxi without driver. It is really interesting to know the technology that might be applied in our daily lives. Finally, we would like to thank RCIP for this opportunity to be a finalist in this competition. Thank you to our mentor, by Andy, Mas Iwan, Mas Teddy, Mas Haris, Mas Gaswu, and thank you to our family for the never-ending support and love. Thank you all! Thank you for watching our video, and thank you to RoboCup Asia Pacific Tianjin China 2022. We will see you again. Bye-bye!